What's up, guys? My name's Dalton, and I built this 1988 Ford Mustang with an EcoBoost swap. I've been getting a lot of questions on particularly how to do the EcoBoost swap, what it takes to run it, what trans you can put behind it. Um, today, we're going to go over a lot of that. As you can see, I have on the board of knowledge back here um, a little bit of what goes into putting one of these motors into your car. All right. This is going to be EcoBoost Swap 101. Uh, today we're talking more about the four-cylinder EcoBoost. I don't have much experience with the six-cylinder EcoBoosts. I've just never messed with them. So why would you want an EcoBoost? It's a four-cylinder. Well, why would you want to swap a four-cylinder into your car? Um, the 2.0 can make about 250 flywheel horsepower stock. Um, the 2.3 will make about 350 horsepower with uh, a little bit of mods, um, nothing internal, just bolt-on stuff like an intercooler intake, downpipe, that kind of stuff. Um, they're super cheap, um, especially the 2.0. Um, you can find them for $600 to $1,000 all day long on LKQ or other places. You just have to make sure that you look for a, not a Focus ST uh, 2.0. Those will go for upwards of two, $3,000. And they're the same as a whole list of vehicles that I'll put in the uh, description below. Um, escapes, Fusions, Edges, a whole lot of Fords use the 2.0-liter EcoBoost front-wheel drive application. Um, the two threes you can get out of a uh, Mustang, mostly. Um, they'll go from like three to $5,000 in LKQ. You might be able to find them somewhere cheaper or find a full parts car to take the engine from. Um, EcoBoosts are also super easy to mod, um, particularly the 2.0. Um, turbo and fueling, you can get upwards of just like 400, 425 horsepower out of two, three thousand dollars of the mods, um, and they're super reliable at that power level. Um, so, should you go with a 2.0 or a 2.3? Um, pros of the 2.0, they're cheaper. Like I said, you can get them for less than a grand all day long. Um, they're stronger. The 2.0 has a closed deck head or closed deck block where the 2.3 has an open deck block that are inherently weaker. Um, I can go more in depth later on that, um, but the 2.0 has a stronger block. Um, the availability, uh, the 2.0, like I said, you can get them from a whole bunch of different cars. The 2.3s, you're kind of stuck with just the Mustang or maybe one or two other applications. I think the Explorers have them as well. Um, cons of the 2.0, they have a tiny turbo from stock. Um, this thing, will not do more than like 280 horsepower with a stock turbo. Um, it's just too small. If you try to push past that power limit, you're just making this turbo into a heat pump and not making any more power. Um, the two, three, from the factory, about 100 more horsepower. Um, so if you are looking for 350 horsepower from your EcoBoost swap without doing a whole bunch of mods, the two, three is the way to go. It's a little bit more pricey, but it makes more power. Um, it has better fueling, um, it has a four lobe cam um, for the fuel pump, which is the direction injection fuel pump, and it'll supply about 25% roughly more than the two liter pump. Um, it's got a better head. Um, the 2.0 has a single port head. Um, there's no actual exhaust manifold on any of the EcoBoost engines. Um, they have what's called a header fold. So all of your headers are internal in the head and it comes out as a single port on the 2.0 and a three port on the 2.3, which is probably two times the size of the 2.0's port. Um, it doesn't become an issue up to probably like 500 horsepower on the 2.0. You make a surprising amount of horsepower on that small outlet. Cons, for the 2.3, they're more expensive. Uh, we talked about that. They have a weaker block with being open deck. Um, both of them suffer from LSPI which is common with a lot of direct injection turbocharged engines. LSPI is low speed pre-ignition. This happens when you're making a whole bunch of power down low, you know, 2000, 3000 RPM. You can start getting into some knocking and that causes piston damage, rod damage. Um, that's how a lot of these engines crack ring lands. And that's where you hear of a lot of issues with the EcoBoost engines. This is only really an issue with the stock turbo. If you go with a larger turbo, it doesn't make as much power in that low range, so you don't really have that issue. Um, just don't lug the engines and you'll be fine. So you also might be saying, the 2.0 is a front wheel drive. It's just front wheel drive or all wheel drive in all applications. So how to make it rear wheel drive? 
used Mustang parts. So go get a Mustang or two, three EcoBoost Mustang intake, oil pan, pickup tube, coolant housing, and coolant pipe. They all bolt on. They're interchangeable between the 2.3 and the 2.0. So they all bolt on, and it'll basically be an orientation kit, which Ford did sell at one point, but they discontinued for who knows why. Um, but all of the individual parts are still available. I will link the part numbers for all of these in the description. So if you guys need to buy any of the stuff, go on to Tasca or go to your local Ford dealership. Find them there. They're not very expensive. Um, I have a little cheat sheet over here. The uh, total for all these parts is about $400 on Tasca. That's what I priced out at, at this current time. Might get better, might get worse. Who knows, inflation. Um, the other thing we could talk about is what trans can I use behind these engines? Um, there's two adapters that I know of, um, being the Esslinger and the Gensport kit. Um, Esslinger will allow you to bolt up to any small block forward. So you can run your T5, TKO, TKX, or um, the TR6060, I think. Um, but really anything that will fit behind a small block forward will fit behind the EcoBoost with the Esslinger kit. You need a bell housing for whatever trains you're running, of course. Um, but this is what I went with. I went with the TKX in my car, simply because the TKX is hold up 600 foot pounds of torque reliably. Um, and I plan on going a little bit crazy with this car. So if you go with the Gem Sport kit, that's all your BMW guys. This is what Chelsea Denofa runs. Um, you can use the Getrag five speed or the ZF five or six speed. I don't know a whole lot about BMW Trans because I've never owned a BMW and I'm not a big BMW guy. But if you want to run a BMW Trans and if you can find one cheap and that's what you're uh, into, Gem Sport kit. The last thing I don't have written up here is how to make these engines run in any car. So there's two options for making these engines run or running the ECU for these cars. Um, one would be the uh, Ant Steering Electronics Kit. Um, they have an eBay store, they have a website. Um, Basically what the kit is, is a Focus ST ECU that has the passive anti-theft system deleted. Um, that allows it to run without a key and without having any kind of body module on it. It's just the ECU alone. Um, they supply a whole harness with uh, a fuse block. Um, the only thing you have to purchase outside of that is a Focus ST throttle pedal and they give you the fuse box um, and the sub harness for like all the power stuff with that. Um, and you also need a Focus ST engine harness, which checking online, they're about $250. I will link that part number in the description down below. The other option is to go with a Ford control pack. This is only available for the 2.3. They had a 2.0, Ford made a 2.0 control pack before and discontinued it. Again, no clue why, but they did. Um, so you can go with the 2.3 control pack. Um, they start around like $2,300. Um, the ant steering stuff is around $1,000, including the throttle pedal and wiring harness. So that's what I did. It's a cheaper route. It's a little bit easier. Um, and the guys over at ant steering are awesome. Any questions I had with this stuff, they were really quick to answer it. Um, super good guys over there. So that's going to be it for the 101 section. Uh, I'm going to do a more in-depth video on my car showing what components I have in here, why I chose those components, and maybe a driving video showing you what it's like. Right now it's not great uh, because the gearing's not right. The uh, rear end has 308 gears, which do not really work with this uh, gearbox. So it has super, super long gears. Um, I will fix that probably this winter and we're gonna get more power, but we'll talk about that in the next one.